Hey guys, Mark here. In this video, I want to talk to you about functions and callback functions. What are the difference and which one should you use for any given situation? So let's look at it. So function, first of all, what it is, is a block of code that you are going to perform a series of calculations or whatever else you want to do within that function. And then at the end, you have an option to return the value after you have done all your calculations in a form in a type that is called return. Callback function is you will use this function to do a series of uh, calculations that you just like you would do a regular function. However, the JavaScript part will not continue until this callback function has finished doing its thing. So for example, let me give you a, a short example. So in here, I'm just going to, even though I have a jQuery in here, then I have a jQuery DOM thing selected, whatever. But I'm going to open a regular JavaScript plan just to show you. So I'm going to call it function. So I'll name this function D1 or rather reg func. And in here, I'm not going to do any, Not it's not going to have any parameters to put in here. So basically, I'm going to say I'm going to console out call log and then say uh, code with mark or something like that. Just show you what this function does and how do you call them. Call it call a function. So it's call with mark and then that's that. And then if I want to use this function, pretty much all I do is copy this line of code, call it up, and then if I go to my browser here, refresh it, what I'm expecting to see is on the console part in Google Chrome, it will say code with mark. So if I refresh that now, it's going to say, hey, code with mark. Now what I want to do is I want to same function. I want it to return a value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, let's say D1. So in here, I'm going to say D return this is the stuff that it's going to do so i'm going to say var equal d equal to so basically what it's going to do is it's going to say i'm going to create a variable called d2 then it's going to take whatever that put was put in the function and then it's going to return it so i'm going to say d1 which is the parameter that is coming in and then i'm going to add to it call it code with mark And then I'll put a little space in here just for make it look nice and clean. And now I will set this to a variable called, I don't know, C1 or something like that. You can call it whatever you want. And I'll take this console thingy out of here. And then I will console out the C1 part of it. Nothing special here, guys. This is some something basic stuff, but as you will see when we look into the callback function, how this could be valuable to you to know which one you should use. All right, so let's go to the browser and let's see what happens here. I'm gonna refresh the browser. And in here, right now it says undefined. And I did this on purpose because in this function, it expects a parameter to go in. And right now there is nothing in this function that is being passed on. So in here, the one that says undefined, that was expected. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass a parameter, uh, call this awesome functions, save it, and if I run rerun the code or refresh the browser, now expect to see is awesome function dash code with mark. So let's redo that. And voila, there you go. Now, that was something simple, no problem, right? So let's say if I wanted to rerun this, actually, I'll do it here as well. So I'll just say copy again. And you will see what I mean, why the reason why I'm doing this. So I'll just call it again, and I'll call this dash to dash, something like that. Right, so if I refresh it, now you have first call of the function, second call of the function. Now what I wanted to do is, now I wanna create a callback function. 
And this is very confusing to most people, but after you go through this video, you will see how easy it is to create callback functions. So here we go. So I'm gonna open up a create a new function. And then in here, basically, whichever argument that you wanna pass through it, and then if you want the callback function to return a value rather than calling a return, you could just simply call it call back. Literally as simple as that. So I'm gonna copy this. And then whatever you want to pass in this callback uh, function, you just put it in this parenthesis. So I could just say argument one or something like that. And then close that out. And now I'll just call this call back func, right? So how do we use this function compared to this one right here? So let me show you. So what do you do is one. So I'm gonna close this out, not console this. So I'm gonna call this function like this, callback, and then I'll pass this argument called awesome functions. And then where it says callback, we're gonna put an anonymous function that will return the value within this function. Right now we have only thing that we have passing going back to it is called whatever this is, and it's gonna call back in here. Just to give you an example, I'll just put it like a, a string in here, call it I love coding or something like that, right? So now if I go back in here, actually let me let me do this, so keep these things consistent. So this is the callback function, all of this right here, and on the top is a regular function, this right here. All right, so now we're doing about talking about the callbacks function. So in order for us to get the value back, which is this, what we do is we call it an anonymous function, call it function, and then within this, we can call it a parameter called data, And then we can cancel out the data part in this function. That's how you call it a callback function. So let me go console, log, data. So what I'm expecting to see in here, this is the parameter that I passed in here. And then what this is gonna do is this is gonna go in here and then it's going to concatenate this awesome function and then add to it, I love coding. And then it's going to console out in here. All right. And I want to run this burn first. And then I want to give you the dilemma as to which one you should use and which one is appropriate time to use it. So let's run this, refresh the browser. Wow, nothing really happened. First line of code, we have what we expected. Second line of code came out to be this. But the first one is return. Now here's an example of what I wanna show you. So let's say I have, I'm gonna run the same one after this one. So I'll call this one. This is awesome function based on the regular function, which is this. And then I have after I call the callback function. I know it's kind of getting confusing, but trust me, bear with me. It will all make sense pretty soon. So first what I'm doing is I'm calling the regular function, then I'm calling the callback function, then I'm calling the regular function again. So let's rerun this. So here we go. We got regular function, callback function, regular function. Now, this explanation will come in handy for you. When you are writing your JavaScript code, or even jQuery code or whatever code within the web application, if something that is local, write a function that returns a value. So that way it will be quick, no matter how quick, um, no matter whatever the amount of data you are trying to filter through it, if you are in the local environment, it will work and work fast 
and then efficiently. Secondly, if you are making a call to external source, whether it be an API call or an AJAX call or anything like that, always, always use callback function. Reason being is because the way that uh, JavaScript work is that it goes line by line by line. So let me put this in perspective for you. So in here, we have a regular function. So let's say line 18, we have a regular function that we call. And then we call the callback function, which is from another URL. Let's just say it's going to external URL, trying to get the data back and so on. And this particular process could take anywhere from 200 milliseconds to 500 or even one second, whatever the case might be, right? And then followed by this. And like I said before, JavaScript, the way that it works, it goes line by line. So it's gonna run this code first, then it's gonna come back to me here. And then even though if it's not finished, if there's anything underneath it, it's gonna continue running it. So this function may not have finished doing its thing, but JavaScript doesn't care. It's gonna say, oh, you still doing it? Great, I'm gonna go on to the next line of code. So it's gonna run this. So if you have something important going on in here, this particular uh, callback function will not run if you have this. I mean, it will run, but you get an error message because the line of code that it went to the next step. So hopefully that will make sense to you or it made sense to you so you have a better understanding. So at the end of the everything said and done, when you are having to do with any kind of calculation locally, always use a function that returns the value. And then when you are making a call to an external source, always use a, a callback function because that way, the code will not continue until that process of external source has finished uh, doing whatever it needs to do so it can come back. So, all right, guys, hopefully that will help you to understand the difference between callback function and a regular function. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave it below, and I'll talk to you guys later.